Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna be showing you a little tip. Now, if you've been here before and watched my other Luminar videos, you know that I like to edit with a, a theme in mind, which is light, detail, color, and generally in that order, color at the end, mostly, not entirely, but generally speaking, I like to do kind of my color grade at the end. And one of the tools I really like to use is Color Harmony. It's got lots of tools in it. It actually has four different color tools in it. It's a great tool, gives you an amazing amount of control over the color and the color shifts that you can do. It can really enhance the color in a photo. But you can easily get over the top with it. And this tip is going to be all about controlling the use of color in your images. Now, I'll be using Color Harmony to show this, but this tip will work regardless of which color tools you're using. Let's go ahead and get into it. I've got this photo here. I've already made some adjustments to the light. Nothing done with color because I just want to focus in on color harmony in this case. Again, there's four different tools as you can see here, and I'm going to use three of them in this photo and three in the second photo that I use as well. What I'll often do is after I get my light and detail and all that kind of sorted out, I'll come in here and, you know, this is a sunset. So for me, especially with sunsets, yeah, I want to amp up the color. I want to make that a little bit more intense. Uh, and so I want to make it more brilliant. I want some more warmth, right? I'd go to split color warmth. And I want the warm colors to get warmer. I want the cool colors to get a little cooler. And then I like to go into color balance. And I like to go into the highlights and maybe give that a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of magenta, maybe a little bit like that, and maybe a little bit in the midtones as well to give it a little bit of red. But you can kind of see what's happening. The photo is getting too red and too colorful. Now, obviously, I can come back in here and pull these numbers down a little bit, but there's a an easier way to kind of put a governor on this, and that's with a mask. Now, Color Harmony, I think of it, and the name implies that it's about harmonizing colors across the image, which I think it is, and it does a great job of that. But it doesn't always work out, especially if you use multiple tools. And that's why I often mention in my videos, be careful not to use too many color tools. And there's four in Color Harmony. I've already used three of them. So that's probably too many, but it's a great example of what I'm talking about. And that is, if you look at it, you can see where the uh, the main color is showing up, right? The biggest pops of color are showing up kind of like here in these brighter parts and, and some here as well. And so what I like to do is go in and take a look at the histogram. You can look at the histogram here and you can see if you just look overall, you can see it's kind of shifted to the right, which means overall it's a fairly bright photo. There are some dark parts, obviously. You can see that in this histogram. But this is the, the middle of the histogram is essentially the midtones. And then anything to the right goes from midtones toward highlights. So you can see that the majority of the light distribution for this photo is between midtones and highlights. Well, there's a great way to control the color in those areas, and that's with a luminosity mask. And so that's one of the things I like to do because it gives you an amazing amount of control. And one of the best things that you can do from a control standpoint is to do the, I like to call the fade. Uh, and that is creating a gradient zone by extending these triangles out. Now, what I've done here is I've taken the luminance mask or luminance range or luminosity mask and put it mostly in those mid-tone areas. And you can move this around. And this is not a full tutorial on using luminosity masks. I have videos like that if you want to check them out. But all I'm doing is really concentrating the majority of the... Um, mass to apply in the midtone areas and I might shift it a little bit right. You can kind of see because this represents the, the distribution of light. I'm kind of lining it up with the histogram. And then what I'm doing here is I'm fading that out and I want to fade it gently into some of those other areas and I want to fade it a little bit more gently into the highlights. And so now if you go and look at the color distribution, it's a lot more subtle. And so if you look at the before, in the after, it's a lot more subtle use of color and I think a lot more natural look. Now I can go into the masking tool and I can go into mask actions and I can hit fill and that will fill 100% of the mask across 100% of the image, which will show you what all those color adjustments will look like across the entire image. So if I hit fill, you see that? Now it's a lot more vibrant, but if I hit command Z on my Mac, which is backing up a step, I'm back to my luminosity mask. So you can see that if, again, I'll hit fill, way too intense, too much red, especially in those bright parts. And so having that luminosity mask where it fades into those bright parts, but stays kind of more concentrated in the midtones, much like the histogram, gives me a little bit better distribution of light. So let me undo that again. And that's what it looks like now. So if you look at the before and after, 
Before, not very much color at all, and after, a nicer pop of color overall gives you better control, and that's why I like this trick so much. And then you can come back, of course, and make further refinements here. But what, what I want to do is show you this same example on another photo, just to give you another flavor for it. So here we go, same thing as previous image, which is I've already made light adjustments. I've just made no color adjustments. And of course, I'm gonna go into Color Harmony simply because I love it. It's incredibly powerful and it's got a lot of tools, which is a good way to demo how quickly you can get over the top. Notice I moved Brilliance and that blue is getting pretty intense. But blue is a cooler color, which is kind of darker. That should tell you it's more in the shadows, right? So what I really wanna do is get some of that beautiful light in the highlight areas, but not as much in the shadows. And I want to get into some of the midtones, but again, not much of the shadows. It's a great way to do that is with the luminosity mask. So I'm just kind of making some moves here and I might go into midtones and do a little bit here as well, get a little bit of warmth there. And, and I, I kind of like that, but it's a little bit too intense. Again, look at the histogram. There, there's a fair amount here, which is going to um, be just left of the middle. So slightly into the lower midtones, if you will, but a huge chunk of the, uh, the the distribution of light is to the right of this center, so from midtones into the highlights. So just keep that in mind when you're building this luminosity mask, because again, this bar represents the distribution of light, left being shadows, right being highlights. I don't want to really bring up color in the shadows. I can just get rid of that. I mean, you can see what I can do right there. I'm just getting rid of it. Uh, maybe I want to fade it a little bit, so you grab that triangle. If I can grab it with my mouse, there we go and you can fade it. And the further you fade it away from that line, the more gentle the distribution of light is. Notice when it's close like that, it's a lot more red, but the further these lines are apart, the lot more gentle and faded it is. That gives you a smoother transition. So the, uh, the amount of color in those areas is reduced, which gives you a lot less of kind of like in your face kind of color look. Now I wanna pull it back some from the highlights as well because one of the things I noticed was, especially in those really bright parts, it seemed a little too intense there in the oranges. Now I've got a lot nicer distribution of light uh, in, ter in terms of how the mask is applying, and I think that's gonna look a lot better. And if I look at Color Harmony now, before and after, you can see a much more gentle implementation of that. And I'll do the same trick with the fill. So that's with the luminosity mask, if I hit fill, that's without the luminosity mask. It's not a huge difference, but there's a lot more color in the blue. And the oranges and yellows up here are a little bit more intense. So let me hit control Z. You can see that they've reduced a little bit. So use that tip. And when you're setting up the luminosity mask, also just look, by the way, activate your histogram. If you haven't, just click view and show histogram. That will show you the histogram. Uh, but you can use your luminosity mask because it just represents the distribution of light, same as a histogram. You can use that as kind of your guide as to what parts of the photo you want to concentrate the, uh, the edits in. And so it's a great way to kind of guide yourself into creating a nice balanced color look without going over the top because some of these tools, and there's a lot of them in Luminar and they're really good at adjusting color. I just think you have to be careful. I use Color Harmony here because it has the four tools and I use three of them, but you can see a nice bef uh, before and after, and then, uh, like I said, you can come in and further refine that if you want to once you have the mask in place. But use this on any of the color tools, or frankly, any of the tools at all, because it's a great way to control your edit with the luminosity mask, because it's representing that distributional light, which is really what you're trying to control anyway. Hope this gives you some ideas about your own edits, my friends. And by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And also, I've got a free ebook about Luminar Neo. You can get it at the link below if you want to check that out. It's 27 pages of information about how to get the most out of this amazing product. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for hanging out. Stopping by. I'll see you next time, my friends. And until then, adios.